Hi, I'm Pastor Dave, teaching evangelist with Lamb and Lion Ministries. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4 says, Satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. The Bible presents a consistent picture of how sin and deception are related. A key to understanding spiritual deception is the fact that we often choose what we want to believe rather than what we should believe, even when we are given proof of what is right and what is deceptive. John says in John 12, verse 37, even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. Notice that they would not believe Jesus despite the miracles. This means their unbelief was willful. Now, I say all that because I want to go back a few weeks to an interview Tucker Carlson did with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Putin said something that I'm not sure many people caught. He said the U.S. is run by the CIA and other agencies, not elected officials. He supported this statement by referring to three examples. The first example, he said, happened in 2000, when he became the president of Russia. He said he wanted to restore relations with the West and why he was hosting then U.S. President Bill Clinton in Moscow. He asked him if he thought it would be possible for Russia to join NATO. Putin said Clinton's initial response was yes, but then after Clinton talked to his team, he said the answer would be no. He said the other example came in 2007, when Putin visited the home of George Bush on the ocean in Kennebunk Park, Maine, when he said he had a very serious conversation with President Bush and his team. He said he realized the president was not the decision maker. Then the third one is in 2008. Why, again, meeting with U.S. President George Bush, he was told the CIA said we have been working with the opposition in Russia and we believe that this is the right thing to do and we will keep on doing it. Not what the president of Russia wanted to hear. Now, in each example, Putin says it was the CIA which made the decision, not the president. So, why did Putin's accusation from just a few weeks ago that the U.S. is run by the CIA and other agencies, why did that catch my ear so much? Well, to answer that, I need to take us back to the 1950s and 1960s and something called Operation Mockingbird. See, this was a program designed to completely manipulate the mainstream media and the news coming out of that. Operation Mockingbird was a program where journalists were actually on the CIA payroll. Their job was to make sure the approved talking points were given to and aired on local and national TV broadcast. Now, at first, this method of controlling the news was denied. But in 1976, during the church committee hearings, which was a Senate Intelligence Committee, it came out in the public that the CIA actually had journalists on their payroll. In the last few years, the term fake news has become popular, but it's not a new term. The root of that term goes all the way back to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. The term was created by the CIA. It was used for anyone who had uh, another opinion or that conflicted with what was publicly being proposed. Again, in 1976, it was the church committee hearings which brought out into the open what was hidden from the American public. Then in 1977, Carl Bernstein, who is a well-known investigative journalist, he's most famously known for breaking the Watergate scandal, which eventually led to the resignation of President Nixon. In 1977, Bernstein wrote an article for Rolling Stone magazine. And in it, he named names. He said the media outlets of CBS, NBC, ABC, New York Times, the LA Times, the Associated Press, the Saturday Evening Post, Newsweek, and Time Magazine all had journalists on the CIA payroll and told the American public only what CIA wanted people to know. Now, because this practice was now out in the public, George Bush, who was at the time the director of the CIA, he came out and said, well, the CIA will no longer pay journalists to write stories. Then he added, it will now be voluntary. So they may not be paid, but they are still going to be sending out talking points that are only approved 
by the CIA. By the way, this is not just an American practice. The British secret, secret intelligence, known as MI6, does the same thing over in England. Now, Carol Quigley, who taught political science at Princeton, Harvard, and Georgetown, and who Bill Clinton many times says was his mentor, in 1966, Quigley wrote a book called Tragedy and Hope. The book completely exposed the practice of fake news and how the media controlled talking points. This book was so damaging that it was said the Council of Foreign Relations confiscated and destroyed the printing plates so no more copies could be printed. And they tried to buy up all the copies that made it into the hands of the public. That was in 1966. Ten years later, everything came out into the public with the church committee hearings. The lies and cover-ups were now exposed. It's interesting. That was almost 60 years ago. Yet we still find ourselves in the same situation. The powers that be are still trying to control everything we hear and believe. And unfortunately, many people just assume everything is okay. And if something is questioned, it quickly is labeled a conspiracy theory and dismissed. Uh, that is exactly why people need to seek out and understand Bible prophecy. The people who know what the Bible has told us and are prepared for what, for what lies ahead, the ones who can look forward and say, we understand what the Bible says and understands given us plenty of warnings about the end times and the depth of deception that this world is going to experience and even embrace. Now, I believe we are witnessing the fulfillment of 2 Corinthians 4.4, as Satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel and of the glory of Christ. You know, the mainstream media, the, the way they handle the, the World Economic Forum, uh, the way they handle the World Health Organization, uh, the creation and acceptance of 15-minute cities, Fed Now, central bank digital currencies, digital IDs, brain chip implants, transgenderism, and same-sex marriage, all are topics that have been publicly presented with deception. The public has been told to accept and embrace the Great Reset, whereas we should be embracing the Great Commission. You know, I appreciate all of you who are diligently seeking truth and willing to stand up for the gospel of Jesus. Let's all greatly look forward to his one day return as we in, in one accord look up and say, Maranatha, the Lord Jesus. Uh -huh.